So a long time ago, I watched this uh, movie called Little Buddha. I don't know how many years ago, maybe 15 years or 20 years. This is actually my favorite spiritual movie. It tells the story of Prince Siddhartha Gautama from the moment when he was born until after many years of meditation, he became the Buddha, the enlightened one. That's Keanu Reeves, by the way. Anyway, as soon as I watched this movie, I fell in love with Buddhism. I started to read many books about Buddhism. I attended lectures on Buddhism. And for many years, I dreamed about living in a Buddhist monastery. I just wanted to have that experience of being surrounded by Buddhist monks, listening to their prayers, and listening to their pujas, and also just learning directly from them. And one day, actually, that dream became true. I signed up for a Buddhist course in a Buddhist monastery in Nepal. Now that I'm here in Nepal, I decided that I wanted to show you this place. I think I'm almost there, I'm a bit lost actually. What? It's very close, but I'm just like, there's so many little streets here. I don't know exactly where to go. Namaste. Namaste. Copan Gompa? Yes. That's Copan Gompa? Yes. This way, just straight? You can go this way and then like that. Okay, thank you. Namaste. Copan Gompa? This little way? Oh, that, oh, that way. Thank you. Almost there. Finally, I need some water. That's it. That's Copan over there. Almost there. Just a few more steps. Let's take a look at the view. Finally, we made it. Welcome to Copan Monastery. Right over there, that's the main gompa. That's where the monks are doing their normal pujas every day. But we didn't use it during the course. During the course, we're all we were somewhere behind. I think that building over there, that's another gompa that we were using for the one month course. But now they're renovating that building, so they're not using it at the moment. So my room when I stayed here in 2005 was somewhere over here, and which is right next to the gompa. The gompa is underneath here, that's where we had the classes. But this building is completely new. I mean, when I was here, it was very, very basic. Uh, you could barely close the door. These are really nice private rooms for retreat. Okay, I have to show you this. This was the gompa where we had the classes. For one month, we would sit here. We were about, we were probably about 100 people following this course. The main entrance to the Gompa was right here. Everything is in construction at the moment. But it was the entry to the Gompa. And yes, right here. This is what we have the classes every day for one month um, philosophy, Buddhist philosophy classes. So normally this is full of uh, Buddhist status. The teacher will be sitting just behind in a table right here. And yes, in this whole place, this is where we used to take the classes. 
I guess they are preparing it for next for the next course. And right right here, this is where we used to do my laundry every few days. The course was about the graduated path to enlightenment, which is kind of like a step-by-step -step process of different teachings that you develop gradually until you reach finally to the state of enlightenment. Or I think something like that. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. I really enjoyed the course and I really enjoyed my experience of being here. It was probably one of the most profound spiritual experiences that I had. Uh, you know, I was living my dream. I had dreamed about this for so many years. So being in this place and listening to the Buddhist teachings, um, it was something extraordinary for me. I was feeling very joyful, very grateful, very, in a way, very emotional, but in a very positive way. But at the same time, although really enjoyed my stay here and I was feeling so happy and grateful, and I also realized something. And I discovered that Buddhism is not really my path. Although I love the teachings of Buddhism, it's really not for me. My path is yoga. It's difficult for me to tell you why I felt like Buddhism is not my path. One reason is because I felt it was a little bit too formal and religious. The way they transmit the teachings, there is too many formalities, in my opinion. Also, coming from a Catholic background, and coming into a, living in a Buddhist monastery, you realize like, what, well, there all these rituals, they are very similar to the Catholic uh, religion. I actually have a roommate from Mexico, and after one week he left the course because he, he said to me, like, I didn't leave the Catholic church to come to this. So just to give you an idea, you know, there's a lot of prayers and a lot of rituals. They're beautiful and there is a lot of meaning behind them, but at the same time, it was too close to the Catholic uh, tradition for me. So that's one thing that put me off. But also, there's nothing wrong about it. It was actually a really good experience for me because it, make, it made it more clear for me that what I have to do, what, where do I have to focus my energy. Once I realized this, I naturally stopped reading books about Buddhism. I just started to read more about uh, yoga philosophy. And it's not that I didn't want to study about Buddhism, but it's just that I naturally focus on the yoga tradition. And that's something I think was very positive for me. Even when I was using the Copan library, I found a copy of my favorite yoga philosophy book, which is still there today, the Bhagavad Gita. I think this was the first time I came across this commentary of the Bhagavad Gita by Paramahansa Yogananda. So I used to spend my free time during the course reading this yoga philosophy book at the library. Although I think the teachers didn't really like that. I need to show you this place. We are right now at the roof terrace of the library. And this is very special for me because I used to come here with my roommate and a monk. This monk was teaching us how to recite the Heart Sutra. So we used to sit right here, right, right over here. Yeah, so he was trying to teach us the Heart Sutra, which is a beautiful text from the Buddhist tradition. It's my favorite teaching. Maybe I will talk about it in another vlog. My idea was to memorize this whole text and to be able to recite it and chant it the same way that the Buddhist monks do. But I never, I never learned it. I mean, we had classes. We have three days classes and that's it. But at least we had the intention to learn it. I don't know if you can see it, right over there, that is the Bodhanath Stupa. Hiroko! <laughs> so now I'm with my friend Hiroko. Yay. We're walking to, to another monastery near Copan. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful, beautiful walk. Yeah, beautiful walk. I think so. Are you getting tired? <laughs> I, I always catch you on your journey. Why is that? <laughs> but the timing. <laughs> okay, we took the wrong way. Now we're a little bit lost. We should have been there already. Is that a Shiva Lingam? Yeah. Here goes tired. <laughs> she needs to see. And I need some water. Oh my God, I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> and we took the longest route but finally we're here i think yeah the monastery is just right there
of the monastery. It's huge. Okay, we're now going back to Copan, and I think we got the right instructions how yeah, to get yes, back. Yes. Hopefully we won't get lost this mm -hmm. time. Finally, we made it to Copan, and luckily, I wanted to walk back. We're going with Hiroko. <laughs> <laughs> 